Okay, welcome. Hello. Uh, welcome to Lakshmi Remani and Christian Kovac from Adaptavist. Um, both are joining us tonight from London and want to tell us something about their pioneering migration to the cloud of a very large customer that they have. And I think that's very interesting because as we are told and have been told repeatedly in the last couple of weeks, the cloud is the future. And if you want to be anywhere, you have to be in the cloud, not even in your own cloud, but in the Atlassian cloud. So, and that's what they will talk about today. So without further ado, over to you, Lakshmi, to start your presentation and everybody else, including myself, will basically switch off video and disappear. So see you after your presentation. Thank you, Jörg. So hi, everyone, and welcome to the presentation on uh, a pioneering large-scale migration to Atlassian Cloud. Um, the agenda for today is a short introduction, followed by the history of migrations in, Atlassian, in the Atlassian space, some of the Atlassian tooling that's available today for migrations, uh, an introduction to Adaptivist's um, migration project, and uh, finally, the summary. So we'll start with the introductions first. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm Lakshmi, I'm a technical consultant at Adaptivist, and I have about eight plus years of experience in the technology industry. And I'm currently working on the second major project using the um, process and migration tooling, which, will be dis which we will be discussing in this presentation. Um, we will take a closer look into the tool as we go along. And a little bit about my company, Adaptivist. Adaptivist was founded in 2005 and has over 300 employees. Uh, it's headquartered in London. Uh, we have offices in the US, Canada, Spain, Malaysia, and Estonia. Uh, Adaptivist is a platinum vendor and solution partner of Atlassian and is also the official partner to Slack. So we will begin with a brief history of Atlassian Cloud. Um, Atlassian's on-demand service for Jira and Confluence was released in 2011. In 2014, Atlassian on-demand service was rebranded to Atlassian Cloud along with Atlassian Connect, which was a new way based on REST interfaces for our developers to customize the cloud instance with add-ons. Uh, at this point in 2014, the cloud and server versions diverged. And finally, in 2019 and 2020, Atlassian released the premium and enterprise versions of its software. Atlassian are doubling down cloud to make it appealing to larger businesses and enterprises. Uh, the cloud premium and enterprise offerings by Atlassian, amongst other things, provide 24 seven premium support, loads of advanced features, unlimited storage and sandbox environments. I know that people have been screaming out for sandbox environments and this will be available soon. Uh, our focus area for this presentation will be Jira software. So before that, a quick summary of other key tools. Migration for Confluence is not as complicated as for Jira. For a server to cloud, the Confluence Cloud Migration Assistant works very well. And for other cases, XML space export is pretty good. For Bitbucket, the standard migration will move all the data and configuration is typically a manual task. Now that we have all the building blocks introduced, we will quickly walk through the history of migrations. Server to server migrations are performed via a Java API and an XML e export using tools such as Votron's Configuration Manager or Adaptivist Project Configurator. Java API exports and imports the J Jira configuration, whereas the XML exports and imports the issue data. However, migrations to Jira Cloud pose significant challenges due to a lack of sophisticated Java or REST API. And the REST API does not do project configuration, export or import. And there is no project importer for cloud. So what do we have for cloud then? Uh, we have three mechanisms by which data can be imported into Atlassian Jira cloud environments. 
The first one is um, an XML import. It, this mechanism imports the entire JIRA site and does not manage app data. Also overrides the entire project on the target instance. The next one is a CSV import. This one is a simplistic import mechanism, imports single projects, imports current state of the issues, but not the history, does not manage app data, and neither does it migrate project configuration. And the third mechanism is a JSON import. This one is a complex mechanism as, ex as opposed to CSV, does mostly what CSV will do for you with the exception to importing issue history. And one advantage of this mechanism is that this is heavily extensible. So let's have a look at what goes on in a, in a merge process, particularly the original process of merging Jira server data into a cloud instance. This involves migrating the entire Jira cloud instance into a temporary server instance, as you can see in step one. Step two involves merging the Jira server source instance into this temporary instance. Finally, step three, exporting from that temporary server instance into your cloud instance. As you can see, this is a very long merge process and doesn't look very neat and easy. Involves a huge downtime and also does not take all your apps over to the new system. So Atlassian wanted to make this process better and they created the Jira Cloud Migration Assistant. So JCMA was released in March, 2020 and has been in beta since 2019. And adaptivists have been working with it since the beta phase. JCMA pushes data from Jira server instance to Jira cloud instance. Let's have a look at some JCMA features. JCMA handles migration of agile boards, project level data, and transforms users and groups into Atlassian IDs. And interestingly, imports configuration schemes into the new target environment, but JCMA cheats a little. It accomplishes this migration by using non-public APIs. And at this point, it is impossible to replicate this functionality outside of Atlassian. This sounds all, this all sounds great. And in spite of some of the amazing stuff that JCMA does, it still has its challenges. These challenges include unreliable data migration, no support for app specific data migration. Even some of the out of the box custom fields are not supported and it only migrates data from server to cloud. It doesn't do a cloud to cloud migration. And I believe JCMA is also not yet compatible with cloud. So taking cognizance of the issues highlighted in the previous slide, Atlassian invited my colleague, Chris Kovacs to the Atlassian headquarters in Sydney in December of last year to help improve the cloud migration tooling. Chris is, Chris is here today with me on this presentation. He's a panelist and he would be quite willing to answer any questions you may have post this presentation. Um, or also if you're actually putting questions into the chat, he's quite, he'd be happy to answer your questions. And he has also worked on the prestigious ARM project, which we will talk about in a few minutes. So a few things came out of Chris's interaction with Atlassian. Firstly, it was understood that public administration API for JCMA is not available in the short term. However, to improve the JCMA tool, insights were provided. In fact, still being provided by adaptivists to Atlassian. These range from improving logging to exposing the real customer needs to building stronger relationships with the JCMA development team. This was necessary as the complexity and scale of the ARM project is unique, and we are making great strides with the JCMA team in shaping the development of the tool for the future. So introduction to ARM. I alluded to the ARM project a few times already, and it's time to introduce ARM to you. So who are ARM? ARM Holdings Limited is a semiconductor and software design company. Uh, ARM was founded in 1990 and is headquartered in Cambridge in UK uh, and has over 6,000 global employees. Um, yeah, all over the world, 6,000 global employees. An interesting fact about ARM is that more than 95% of the world's smartphones are built on ARM's IP. 
Arm had several Jira server and cloud instances and hundreds of teams working in discrete and disparate ways. And Arm wanted to consolidate these instances and help these teams work closer together. Alongside their need for this consolidation, Arm have a cloud first strategy for building new platforms. This means in 2019, they embarked on their journey and needed to work out how to move their teams from their discrete and disparate systems they currently have to a consolidated cloud future. At the time, there was no clear path to do this. And so they reached out to Adaptivist. Before we get into the details of the project, I would like to give you an idea of the scale of the project we are undertaking with ARM. Uh, a team of four to six Adaptivist colleagues is working full time on the project. Uh, there has been a lot of preparatory work for this project. Around 10% of ARM's teams have been successfully migrated so far and we are just 12 months into the project and we have 12 more months to get to the finish line for this project. As you can see, a lot of effort has already been put in and a lot more effort is needed. This is a seriously large undertaking. So what does the ARM project entail? Some of the requirements are migrating hundreds of small teams across to the, to the future system, migrating both server and cloud sources, migrating the app data, migrating in batches with minimal downtime, and having a fully performant system post-migration. Let's have a look at how well JCMA would fit these requirements. Although JCMA satisfied most of the requirements, some of them are highlighted in green on the slide, it was important for the ARM project, amongst other requirements, to migrate data from both Jira Cloud and Server and migrate the app data with minimal downtime. There was also a need to minimize unreliable issue data migration. As an unreliable migration would mean larger downtime windows and rerunning processes when necessary. So sadly, JCMA wasn't a complete fit. So what are our other options? Let me take you back to one of the previous slides that, enum that enumerated the three import mechanisms, XML, CSV, and JSON and let's map how this fits ARM. Again, none of these fit terribly well. The red lines tell us that each mechanism has some limitations and none serves our purpose fully. So are we stuck? Uh, no, actually not, as one amongst these still stands out. And that is the JSON import as it is heavily extensible and we can use this to our advantage. So the technical approach for the ARM project was to use JCMA to export the configurations for the server sources. For cloud to cloud migration, this was a manual process of creating the required configuration on the target cloud instance. Then use JSON to export the issue data, issue history, users and links, etc. And then use the extension, which is nothing but the adaptivist tooling to migrate the app data user data and attachments across to the new system, making this a full suite of tools to perform migration. So what does this, adaptive, what does this Adaptivist tooling extension look like? It's nothing but thousands and thousands of lines of code, written Java code, in fact, written over thousands and thousands of resource hours. The tool not only provides mapping for custom fields and user names, but also a full automation of some complex elements. And why do we need to perform this mapping? The extracted data from source may not match the required import format and therefore requires custom mapping code. We have also written code for many such apps for the purposes of migration to cloud. In this little screenshot, you can see some examples for Valiantis and Tempo plugins. Many, of su many such plugins have now been incorporated into our code base. Similar to custom fields, user mapping is also required pre-migration. This user mapping file is generated for you. It looks similar to the screenshot on the slide. User migration works from both server to cloud and cloud to cloud migrations. It also merges users on the source instance to the same user on the target, hence safeguarding all the user history and activity. 
So um, the approach for the ARM project. Um, so here in this slide, uh, we've got these six different um, uh, points. I'm gonna highlight what these points, because these points make up the approach for the ARM project. So the first one was identify. So identifying the sources of the data and the teams using this data, finding the right teams to migrate at the right time. The second was requirements. Identifying the requirements of each of these teams and working closely with these teams. Third one was analysis. Since cloud has a significantly more restrictive con configuration as compared to server, Establishing a sensible path and transforming the data appropriately and effectively was important. And therefore, analysis became the biggest, most important part of this approach. The fourth one was configuration. Configuring the Adaptivish tool based on the analysis. Fifth was JCMA or manual configuration. Migra uh, so for migrating the configuration, use either JCMA to migrate the server configuration across to the target, cloud instance or going through a manual process of recreating the configuration on the target instance for a cloud to cloud migration. Or for that matter, server to cloud, yeah. Yeah, so yeah for the cloud to cloud migration. And then finally, Adaptivist, uh, the sixth approach was to use the Adaptivist tool, using the Adaptivist tool to migrate the data from the source instance into the target. So the main objective of this approach was to move the teams across to the new system seamlessly with minimum downtime so that the teams continue to work as before the migration. So to summarize, we talked about the history of migrations, the complexity of them with huge downtime windows involving significant manual effort. This resulted in the process being effectively non-viable for large businesses. And today migration is now a simpler process with reduced manual effort and low downtime windows. The ARM project is a testament to the fact that this is now uh, viable to larger enterprises. With this migration, ARM are soon to be the biggest individual Atlassian Cloud customer. Effectively, what wasn't possible before is possible now. So what does the future hold for us? Well, I'd like to take you back to this slide. This was the result of the work we are doing with Atlassian, and I'd like to highlight this line. The Public Administration API will not be available in the short term. So who knows what that could mean in the future? Thank you for listening to me. We've come to the end of the presentation. Uh, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna just maybe come back to the Zoom meeting. That was brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Um, that was at least summit ready. So uh, that was very interesting. Uh, and before, while I promote everybody to panelists, uh, I want to ask the first question. Um, so you are basically moving the, the, the JIRA instances team by team and project by project, basically. Um, so do you have cases where uh, users are in the cloud and on the server and have overlap between both? So they have to be on the cloud or on the server. Or was that, uh, could you cleanly separate the users, these are in the cloud, these are only on server. And how do you manage that overlap? Uh, I don't know, Chris can answer that question. I mean, I do know the answer, but I'll wait for Chris to answer the question. Sure thing, hi. Um, so to answer that question, right now, because we are moving project by project, it's, uh, it's simply expected that users must be able to work on cloud and on server as well, or in arms case, data center. That means simply um, we have two sets of users. Uh, the arm had to approach Atlassian and, um, and basically double their users, uh, or user tier in this case. So they have to have users, uh, all their users in server or data center and cloud as well. Okay, so they basically doubled all the users. Yeah. And yeah. how do they handle the, the, the login or single sign-on if they have that? Is that possible? Uh, single sign-on cloud is, is not, um, uh, I wouldn't say it's not possible, 
but uh, at this point arm it doesn't need it or at least um has not invested in uh in okay. it uh, up until now um but they use um they use single sign on on their data center instance okay um you were talking about analysis and everything did you have also have to solve the issue of um different versions on server on, on, on the cloud, uh, especially for apps. So that the app version on cloud was even newer than the version on the server. Um, well, yes, um, but the, uh, I think um, the biggest challenge lies in, in apps in cloud because they tend to change quite quickly. This is both advantages and disadvantages. Um, the advantage of, of uh, changing is that uh, I'd say, as an example, uh, there is, we use one of the uh, share, uh, SharePoint connectors, um, as I don't think it's a surprise that ARM might use SharePoint uh, for some of their things. And um, because we, because the migration brought us closer to the vendors and we had to establish certain communication channels um, we were able to just go back to arm at a certain point and say that in two weeks time there will be a new version available on cloud um, of this app and that will um, have certain features that uh, is needed for our next batch of migrations okay so, and so I, I have. Yeah, mm -hmm. so can I also ask a question? Yeah. So, so let's uh, theoretically um, say that eBay will decide one day to also migrate to cloud, and with your know-how, you are planning that we should reach out to Adaptavis, or maybe that's a plan for selling that know-how to Atlassian, or how does it look? Because I know that you are closely cooperate together, as it was also on the slide. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, well, essentially, I'd say it. We handle the scripting part. We have our own tooling, and uh, I. Uh, it's a bit of a self promotion, but I probably say reach out to Adaptivist first, um, because um, we have. If you remember the slide uh, with all the numbers, uh, where describing where it goes, uh, the. Um, the the quickest or the simplest term I can put um, the migration is that data and configuration uh, travels uh, in different parts. Uh, data uh, travels through our own tooling um, with all the um, features uh, that we are building into it um, day by day. And configuration travels uh, through the Jira Migration Assistant. And right now, even though we do love the Migration Assistant, especially because uh, every single batch contains about 20 to 50 projects, and I myself do not want to manually create 20 to 50 projects every time we rerun a migration um, for ARM. Simply, it's um, in the future, because of the limitations, uh, our own two um, the limitations um, Atlassian um, is experiencing with their own tooling, uh, we are we will always be ahead of uh, in terms of issue data, not configuration uh, because Atlassian uh, concentrated on that first. That was apparent uh, even last year in December in Sydney, uh, which is great because we only have to build the other half of the tool. Okay, cool. Thanks for answering. And I have also second question. So let's say that we have around 30 add-ons in Jira. So to migrate of the all the add-ons data, probably I would need to reach to all the 30 vendors and discuss with them migration of their data to the add-on in the cloud. And first of all, checking if the add-on exists in the cloud version. That's correct? Yes. It is. Um, if if um, I imagine myself in, well, my position right now, uh, this is what uh, we are doing. 
uh, at the moment. There are certain, there are different ways uh, vendors tend to uh, hold on to data. Obviously, the most popular is uh, having their own storage, either database or server. Um, some uh, tend to uh, add attachments um, to issues uh, or pages, depending on whether we are talking about Jira Confluence, or uh, sometimes it's a simple custom field. Um, I think um, there are there are certain uh, differences, of course, between the server version and cloud version. Risk register, for instance, uh, helped us uh, with a couple of REST API calls. Um, so our own tool could migrate risk register data um, and, um, and basically, um, but because migrating custom field data while it is stored like that on server, the cloud is different. Cool, thanks for answering. And by the way, great presentation and great tool you built in house. Like I'm really. Perfect. And we have a question from Matthias, I think. Uh, and everybody's able to unmute, by the way, if, they, if you want to ask something. Uh, the question from Matthias is, is there a most limiting factor bottleneck in migration of a typical project to cloud? The IO bandwidth or CPU resources, meaning what are we waiting for during the migration process? That, that makes sense. Uh, and it is probably what we are worried about the most. Um, especially because I said before, we migrate from 20 to 50 projects at a time. Um, unfortunately, this is not up to us because uh, ARM has several teams, they use projects. And even though um, I, I did answer a previ uh, previous question with ARM doubled their, their user count, uh, essentially um, not so basically this causes that we don't have to worry about um, user, well, number of users, um, either in the cloud or on it. Uh, we, um, we do have to migrate a batch of projects at a time. And depending on the size of the projects, um, it usually it is between probably 30,000 and 100,000 issues. Now, um, when it comes to downloading, uh, the, thinking about issue data, because migrating configuration is not, not that lengthy as a process. Uh, and that can be done beforehand. It is possible to have a, a configuration freeze uh, a couple of days before we do the actual migration, especially if we do the migration, the data migration part on a weekend, then we can uh, sort of prepare on Thursday and Friday leading up to the actual migration. Uh, however, um, so uh, the way that our tooling works is that we need issue data in JSON format and that needs to be downloaded first. Uh, given that we tend to work with servers close to wherever our data center is, uh, that doesn't seem to be an issue. However, of course, if we would do it over the internet, that could cause a bottleneck because we are talking about individual JSON data for each issues, um, each, essentially 100,000 issues as a worst case scenario. Um, then the next step is processing this data. Uh, we used threading as much as possible and provided that we work with a beefy computer uh, that that is really quick, um, probably in minutes, even when it comes to uh, 50 projects. Uh, and then, then we have um, issue, uh, well, project JSONs, essentially chunks, because, the, uh, because we use the uh, cloud JSON importer tool, which is built in uh, Jira. Um, we need to limit the size of these files and the number of issues, uh, otherwise we could run into problems. Uh, so we use uh, a thousand issue chunks for that and uh, every single thousand issue, the upload process is not too horrible, but then the actual import process is the bottleneck. Uh, it, it takes about 
anything from 10 to even sometimes 25 minutes and that it, the import process can only be done uh, once per user. So we either need to use several user accounts uh, to sort of create threads uh, or several actual users to do that. But even then, um, the actual uh, JSON import process seems to be the bottleneck. Um, and during such an import, how do you, how does the, the transition work from server to cloud? Does everybody get a pop-up notification and the server access is closed for that project and they have to log in again for cloud? How does that work? So how would, how would it look like? I'm, I'm in the office, I'm working happily in my project and you migrate my stuff to the cloud. I get a pop-up yeah. note, come back in 15 minutes or something, <laughs> get a cup of coffee. Uh -huh. or? Of course, that, that, that's a very good question, actually, because no, nobody wants to find their uh, usual process altered uh, after a lunch break. So um, there is uh, obviously everything, uh, um, every team is contacted, not just by the ARM internal team, but by us as well to gather um, data about configuration, the way they use uh, all these projects, um, how we need to determine how interconnected these projects are because some groups use 150 projects and that would be a bit of a nightmare to migrate uh, in one chunk. So we need to determine the best um, sort of splitting. Um, so we try to heavily involve uh, these teams as much as possible and there is constant communication um, sort of updating them on the process and uh, there is a, a UAT, a user acceptance test before uh, just to not just to make them aware that this is happening uh, because they are already aware but uh, to sort of let them try and ask questions about the differences because, well, I, it's probably not surprising when I say that Chira Cloud is a little bit different uh, than uh, Server, even though they uh, recently they did upgrade the user interface, um, which is brand new and um, for some reason looks a bit like the Server one. Um, but um, but it is it is a welcome addition because that's one one fewer questions that we, we, we need to answer. And once the user acceptance uh, test is done, we agree on a final migration live migration date. And then, um, if anyone gets surprised at that point, they must have had a very long vacation. But that sounds like uh, in the project. It's at least 50% analysis and communication and 50% coding and, and doing stuff, basically. Sounds like it. If not more communication and, and, and analysis. It's, um, there is a process which precedes um, this, um, this whole migration process. Um, obviously, it's best, best practice to do some, a bit of rationalization before you migrate one system to into another system uh, to sort out some of the custom fields, maybe merge a couple of them, to do a bit of, bit of digging through the configuration, see if everything makes sense. And um, that is um, something, another bit that, uh, that ARM um, agreed to do. And, and so far, everybody seems to be quite happy about that. Um, obviously, that requires even more communication and even more agreements. Um, questions from the audience? Anybody? I have many more questions. I can continue asking. I have <laughs> also one more question. So, when you are when I would try, for example, migration, will I receive the playground from Atlassian? So if I will break something, they will restore it from the clear state or something. Let's say that I will mismatch some custom fields or whatever. And then I need to erase that and create the brand, brand new one or the project, let's say. There are two tiers 
I would say in this case. Uh, it is possible to, to, well, Atlassian always encourages everyone, uh, especially when it comes to cloud migrations, to sort of keep an open ticket, at least an open support ticket for migrations, but also just uh, an open communication line between, between ourselves and, and themselves. Uh, so they can create um, backups on demand, but um, that, that would be tier two. If, if, if we really make a big mistake, but tier one would be just to go ahead and, and, and fix it ourselves. Um, sometimes there are clashes, but uh, in my experience throughout this one year of migrating uh, with ARM, uh, it was mainly on, on the server side or during handling configuration data that uh, we ran into problems. Um, also, ARM was one of the first uh, companies that um, received the uh, before mentioned uh, sandbox uh, environment for that cloud instance, uh, as logically that was one of the first questions they asked and everybody would ask when it comes to especially coming from the enterprise world when it comes to cloud uh, because uh, so so the majority of our migrations uh, I, I guess it's not a surprise that they are test migrations and we constantly mess around with the data but the target system is, is always uh, the test um, system. And we only migrate, uh, we only do the live migration once we eliminated all the errors and all the possible problems. Um, obviously vendors and Atlassian themselves have been a huge help because more often than not, uh, we need to reach out to the vendors or Atlassian when it comes to log files or um, hunting down strange, strange errors. Cool, I think thanks. Of what, one of the projects that I'm working on, we had a, we had a sandbox, some kind of a test environment uh, on cloud instance, which I believe expired Saturday. I think there was an expire. Is there an expiry date, Christian? For, uh, uh, not not on our one. Our, 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 but our, but in arm, general. arm, I think, because and um, I'm not in liberty to dis uh, disclose that. But we are talking about thousands of users. I assume that wouldn't surprise anyone at this point. Um, the uh, the test environment has quite a few users as well, and it was a part of the deal. Um, due to ARM being one of the pioneers of these, um, of this uh, Atlassian cloud for enterprise um, scheme. Were there any data integrations that you had to port as well? So is the Jira talking to other systems, to third party vendors or suppliers of ARM? Was, there, or was this Jira standalone and isolated within ARM? We are talking about different instances, um, both cloud and server and data center. Um, normally, uh, they have one data center instance that is fairly big that tended to communicate. Um, I did mention before a, sh a SharePoint connector and that was definitely one of them. There are a couple of them. Uh, there's monitoring in place, as you would expect, uh, you would expect in an enterprise level company. Um, obviously monitoring, uh, the, monitoring is a great example when it comes to going to cloud because a status page would uh, be an indication whether your cloud instance is up or down or whether Atlassian is working on the problem or not, but mostly they are. Um, so, uh, monitoring has had to be altered. Um, we do some active monitoring uh, in the sense that we, uh, there is some certain pages and certain, let's say, examples or sample data is taken and, and analyzed over time um, to sort of figure out 
um, what the general standing of the cloud instance is. But these had to be built from the ground up. Did you find anything where you decided, uh, no, we are not going to migrate this. This is going to remain on server till the end of time? I wish I could make that decision uh, myself, but uh, well, yes, the, the short answer is yes. There, there is some data that um, I think um, the pattern is that um, because we talk to each team uh, separately, and we need to find out uh, whether the team or those set of projects use certain apps or what they don't. Um, in most of the time we find that there is so much diversity uh, between teams within ARM that they don't have to, we, we don't have to worry about uh, the same set of um, sort of add-ons apps uh, for each and every project. Sometimes this can lead to a sort of manual recreation of data if it's not too much, of course, uh, but we don't have to approach every single add-on uh, by contacting the add-on vendor and thinking that 8,000 users or 10,000 or 50,000 or however many users will definitely use that data. Uh, or will definitely insist on using that data. And since communication is a big part of this migration process, uh, quite often the team themselves just declare data not important. Questions from the audience? I have to ask every now and then. Everybody's happy. Your presentation was absolutely brilliant. There are no open questions from the audience. Just my own curiosity. Um, yeah, so anything you want to add in closing? Parting words, goodbye, whatever. So something that, let's say, lessons learned. The one lesson you learned in that project that you would to like to, I don't know, stitch on a pillow or something and keep forever. So. I, have, I have one lesson learned. I think the, it's, if you've got many instances of cloud, uh, and I don't know if you ever try, if, if you have ever logged in, if you have a cloud account or not, and you've ever logged into a Jira instance, which is on the cloud. And if you have, for example, subscribed to more than one cloud instance, what happens is that you have only one login. So you log in and you've got different instances on the, on the menu bar on the side. I hadn't realized that initially. Um, and I ended up importing the wrong information in the wrong project, in the wrong place. So that's something to be careful about because uh, it is, uh, as much as, as, much as uh, it, it's nice to have all your different instances available in one place and you can just click on a button and it'll, you'll be taken over to another, another domain, another instance of cloud, but you have to be very careful where you're importing what you're doing. So uh, when it comes to importing of data, because it's via the front end after all of this processing happens, you have to be very careful what you're doing, where you are, check the browser, where you are, which instance are you in, and then import the data. Otherwise you might just try doing something which you shouldn't be doing. Perfect. Thank you. Christian, what lesson will you wear on a t-shirt this summer that you learned so that you remember? I think the, uh, the most important lesson I learned, and this is something that um, we talked about in Sydney and have talked about ever since, is uh, communication is key uh, mm. when it comes to cloud migrations. And uh, communications in everything with Atlassian, with the vendors, um, not just with the teams, because when it comes to server to server migration, it's very easy to talk to the other uh, teams, split the projects into chunks, and just work on the problems in isol in relative isolations. Because uh, worst case scenario, we can go into the database to fix things. 
course, that is the safest method. But um, um, even though it is dangerous, it is possible. But because we are talking about several databases of vendors, in the database on the Atlassian side, uh, you need to pace the migration with communication in mind, not just when hunting down errors. Um, but when it comes to coming up with solutions. Sometimes it was a lot easier uh, to just talk to the vendor and they already had a solution because, of course, they know their own app. So instead of, of, of thinking about solutions ourselves or trying to figure out REST API uh, calls, it is often much better. But, of course, communication uh, brings delay with it. Um, because mm -hmm. then all you have to do is send out communication and wait. Yeah, but so, communication is key. Sounds like a cool adaptive T-shirt for the next season. <laughs> Hubert, anything to add from your side? Final One thing? day it will also hit us. I I I, I have that <laughs> feeling. <laughs> so better be prefer, prepared <laughs> and nice that uh, yeah other uh, enterprise level companies are working on that. So. Yeah, as you started the whole the discussion, yeah? So cloud is the future. Yeah. So Lakshmi, Christian, thank you very much. You leave us better prepared tonight. Uh, the shock will not be as big. And we know that communication is key. So with that, thank you again. Uh, stay healthy and enjoy life after lockdown in England. So, but carefully, don't, don't be like other people. <laughs> So, see you around. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for having us. Bye bye.